So, uh, raise your hands if you are sleeping. Okay. Okay. So, uh, how many of you are a startup and enterprise here? Mid enterprise. Okay. So, how many of you can tell me what your customer problem at this moment? What is your customer facing problem at this moment? Can you figure it out? So let's start with the uh, you know, uh, introduction of myself. So I am Vivek Shriga. Uh, I am a developer advocate at uh, DigitalOcean. Uh, I was head of uh, DevOps and QA at Blackbird and uh, I built a DevOps team and you know, a lot of automations for monitoring, log monitoring, uh, log management, release management, etc. Then I was also uh, was working at uh, HCL uh, at Australia and I worked for an enterprise uh, client called Bowl, which was on uh, Big Data. And then I was uh, most of my uh, you know, uh, software development uh, practice was in uh, IBM National. Uh, it was uh, there for eight years in IBM National, building a lot of tools, etc. And uh, a few uh, customers, uh, US Defense, Nokia, Huawei. So let me uh, start with the problem discovery. Okay. So whenever uh, I ask a few of the customers, you know, uh, how do you uh, discover problems uh, of your customer right now? Uh, they would say, build a monitoring system or an alerting system. We could, you know, we could really do that. But uh, at the end of the day, the problem is what to monitor and how to know uh, what to alert on and how to know. Uh, at what scale we need to monitor. So that is a major problem and you will see one of the solutions uh, which we could use to solve that problem. So what I will be discussing is uh, you know, uh, monitoring issue at scale. So basically everybody knows what is monitoring is but uh, we will discuss in depth of what is at scale which I mean and we will discuss few of the use cases and uh, we will uh, introduce uh, a concept called Modulus, which is for Elasticsearch plugin. And we will see how you could run a self-filling systems, or uh, how you could build a self-filling systems on the modules. Uh, and then we will take one simple example to build that, and uh, we will move to question and answers and feedback and stuff like that. So basically, as uh, as previous speakers told. Uh, it is a tactical decision. Okay? It is a tactical uh, you know, concept, and uh, we could do design a lot of things using watchers. And I am talking about only few things here. So, what's monitoring at scale? So, at Blackbird, we used to get 25 to 30 alerts, uh, you know, uh, a day, and uh, still DevOps engineers were like. Oh God, we need to fix this, and you know they used to, you know, uh, feel the pressure of fixing it, and uh, you know, and that is only when we are only monitoring the uh, services which is running. That is, if there is an email service is running or not, SMS service is running or not. If you are checking only for those, that itself is the biggest challenge for the DevOps engineers to figure out where it is failing and how to fix it and all those stuff. So, what do I mean by at scale? So just imagine if you are getting thousands of such requests, thousands of such alerts. So as defined by uh, you know, LinkedIn engineers, you know, if I am getting 35,000 alerts and I have only 24 engineers to respond to the alerts, then it's a big challenge, right? So you need to have a system now to uh, automate few of the things and to know what to do with a few of the alerts and you should know which are the known issues and how you could build automations towards it. So this is uh, defined by LinkedIn, so I picked it from LinkedIn engineers. So some of the use cases, 
So another use case is monitoring your social media uh, for defect failures. So what happens is a uh, few of the defects are now raised by your customers are seen through social media activity. Then there are there is there is a problem I am not able to log in. There is a, this problem that problem in your uh, you know Twitter handle. And then you collect the data in your Elasticsearch and then you figure out there is a problem. Or you get a people uh, you know social media managers will be able to see that and they come out and say hey there is a problem you are facing. So this is uh, and you as of today you know most of these data are collected on Elasticsearch, right? So this is the data is coming in Elasticsearch. So there, there is a second use case. Um, what is your infrastructure? So if you are monitoring some 10 servers, it's fine. So if you are monitoring some 150 servers or you know, process logs, you know, the, the problem with your file descriptor or CPU problems, RAM problems, a usage problems, and there is a uh, some uh, app servers are not working because of the uh, some process has broken up. So these uh, monitoring that infrastructure with, with such a large scale. Uh, will, will be a typical uh, situation for DevOps engineers. So, uh, again, the tracking network activity, that is one more use case. There is a lot of things we need to know who uh, entered into your servers, who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, what they are doing on your servers, etc. So, basically, following your network activity is one of the challenges for DevOps engineers. Application response time. So basically, say for example, you are reading an exam portal and you have 70,000 uh, you know, people uh, accessing the exam portal and they are writing exams. Say for example, in today's uh, you know, TOEFL and uh, you know, PD English exam, where per day we have around you know, 50 to 60,000 uh, people writing that exam, you can't have a slow response for someone and some, some getting a good response. Right? So you need to have a infrastructure. So you need to track those things. And sensitive data appearing in your logs. Like your Aadhaar card numbers should not appear in logs. And you know the credit card numbers, etc. If it is appearing in your logs, then what do you do with those? And how do you alert these things to the developer to fix those problems in that code? And there are some spikes uh, in terms of specific geos from the user activity purpose and uh, you know, uh, there, there could be a few of the challenges like there's many more use cases but few of the use cases is what I have put down. So there could be a you know, five pair login from the same IP, this could be a network issue, so this could be a hacking as uh, somebody is trying to hack into somebody's account. Uh, so these are the few use cases. So if you build a uh, specific uh, you know, uh, you know, scripting for this, or uh, try to architect to solve these problems using a script. Then there is a lot of challenge, and it is pretty costly. And it is going to, uh, you know, the architecting itself is going to take time, and you need a framework at this scale. So there is, uh, you need infrastructure, you need architecture, you need framework, and you need people to do those designs for you. So one of the solution which uh, uh, Elasticsearch provide is uh, something called as Watchers. So, what is this Watcher? Uh, Watcher is a plugin. It's a plugin from Elasticsearch. So, it is a part of uh, XPack. Uh, it is pretty simple. It is, it is a JSON format, it is restful, and pretty easy to get started. I just show you how it is defined, how it is designed. Uh, and it is it has a very good uh, integrations with uh, Elasticsearch, uh, uh, other plugins and other tools like Tens, Kibana and Shield. Uh, Shield, you know, right? Uh, you can't anybody cannot create an alert on any data, right? So to control that, only these set of users can create alert for specific data. So that is how you could build your uh, scaling uh, systems. <laughs> This is the interface uh, of the watches. There you can see uh, there are the two things. One is the custom uh, advanced watch that is built via the JSON format. The first one is the uh, threshold alert, uh, which is a built uh, inbuilt kind of a thing. And these are the watches which have been defined. Uh, you can see we can we can fire the watches in software state and all these things. So this is uh, 
heavy tailored data into two parts. One is previous 10 minutes and one is the, the latest 10 minutes. So, latest 5 minutes and previous 5 minutes. Sorry. And then, uh, and I am filtering it on the users. Okay? So, basically, I am trying to get the data of last 10 minutes. So, I am creating variables for you know, what was the data uh, in, in, that five, in that 10 minutes, what was the data uh, previous 5 minutes and what was the data the latest 5 minutes. Okay? Once I have done that, I have defined a condition. Okay? What is the condition? The condition is, uh, if the data is stored, you know, it is down, when compared to two buckets, data is to the previous, when you compare the data, if it is to pull down, then I would execute an action. So basically I need that if the condition is met, then I would execute a particular action. So basically, so this is the action. So what I am doing here is, I am just calling a web hook to run this action and there is a you know, uh, UR which I have given and this uh, you know, body is executed. And then you could, once the data, once the, you have the data, you know, it's, it's the power, right? Once you have the data and once uh, the webhooks can run and fix the data, do lot of analysis on the data, do diagnosis and figure out what is the problem and uh, do a root cause analysis and tender information to uh, any of the revolving engineers. So basically this, this whole thing is about data. So, so self, uh, what is self-failing? So self-failing is uh, not something, you know, uh, uh, something which we all don't know. It's just that we don't know how to pull data out, right? On what data you want to run this self-failing? So that is the major problem is, not the self-failing. Self-failing is simple, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to skip trouble. But the only the problem is we don't have the data or the alert to run these problems at scale. So make sure that you know how to pull the data out and running these webhooks is pretty simple. You know, it's just a simple uh, API and you just run this and you create a like this and you can do whatever you want when the data is available with you. So high level strategy to build a monitoring system itself is that build a repo on to monitor. So you could, uh, you could use waters as well to build a high level uh, strategy for you know what to monitor and then um, you know you design an alert and triggering mechanism uh, for uh, you know uh, uh, to get those alerts. It doesn't matter uh, if it is self meaning or not, but it is for the building the monitoring system itself. So you have the repo, you have the alert and trigger, and then automate known problems. So basically, this is where how you can build known problems automation only when you know what to monitor and only when you have a repo of what to monitor. And then of course design a condition to get notified and always start simple and get powerful and reduce webhooks uh, effectively if you are using uh, watches. Uh, so this is uh, an open source tool uh, which is which is which is built on the singular lines. It also integrates with Elasticsearch. So you could uh, see, go back and see how you could use this as well to build uh, a lot of stuff uh, in terms of alerting, monitoring, and spike uh, monitoring, etc. So I just wanted to bring this up as well. So most important thing about monitoring is to have a rise to performance infrastructure to, uh, to build a very strong monitoring system itself. Right, so you would need uh, you know price to performing systems, and you don't want to spend a lot of money on you know the infrastructure itself to build monitoring system. So uh, this is one of the things which you have to keep in mind. And uh, you know uh, you need to have a strategy uh, you know to uh, monitor, alert, and auto And if you want to give me feedback on you know a few other things and what I can take back from here and want to uh, learn a lot of stuff, what, what we spoke and if you want to update me on a few of the things, 